All right, so the question now becomes, what happens when we pass 90 degrees? For example, at 120, we're in the second quadrant. What would the point on the unit circle be at that particular location? And how can there be a triangle in the second quadrant? How can we use trig to figure that out? Well, fortunately, the only thing we need to take into account is the fact that once we move into the second quadrant, all the x values are going to be negative, OK? Now, we can draw a triangle from this 120 degree point. We can go down to the x-axis, and we can instantly see that the y value of the point is just going to be the height of this triangle. And then when we go back to the origin, we see that the x value is going to be uh, the width of this triangle except negative, which is why I'm going to label this negative x. Furthermore, we can see that the radius is still going to be the hypotenuse of the triangle. Now, before when we figured out 60, we had a triangle right here. Notice all we're doing is taking that triangle and flipping it over the y-axis to get this triangle. It's exactly the same triangle as this one, except that the x value will now be negative. And if you remember, the x value of that triangle was 1 half, and the y value was square root of 3 over 2. So guess what? This has had the same width of 1 half and the height of square root of 3 over 2. The only difference now is the x value is negative, so the x value will be negative 1 half at 120 degrees. So using the same triangle, just flipping it over. Here's a more formal proof. We already know that cosine of 60 is 1 half. And in this particular triangle, cosine of theta is going to be negative x over r. Okay, and we'll use we'll make theta 60 for now, um, just because that will give us the x value at 120. Okay, so you're using a 30, 60, 90 triangle to figure out the point on the unit circle at 120 degrees. And remember, this orange arc represents 120 degrees from the starting point. So you use a 30, 60, 90 to figure out the point at 120. So the way we'll set this up, I kind of flip this around. Negative x over r is equal to cosine of theta equals 1 half. We will multiply, uh, sorry, we will cross multiply. So we'll get negative 2x equals 1r. Let me just show that for those of you who forgot how to cross multiply. You just multiply like that, that way. All right, so then you will divide both sides by negative 2. And you get x equals negative 1 half r. So that will be the x value of this point. Or if you don't want to use r and you just used r equals 1, the x value would be negative 1 half. All right, next we have sine of 60 equals square root of 3 over 2. We already know that from our uh, lesson on trig angles at 60 degrees, uh, trig values. Now we know that sine of theta is going to be equal to y over r. So again, we're going to use 60 degrees as our theta. Opposite over hypotenuse would be y over r. And we cross multiply there. And we would get 2y equals square root of 3r divided by 2. Or actually, we can just multiply both sides by r. I didn't realize that. Multiply both sides by r, and we get y equals square root of 3 over 2r. In fact, I'll show that for those of you who want to see it. Just multiply both sides by r. So there you go. There's your y value, square root of 3 over 2r. And we put that together. That's what our point looks like at 120 degrees. Now, again, if you don't want to use r as your radius and just 1, you can quickly see the point would be negative 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So guess what? It's the same as the point we had before, except it's flipped over the y-axis, and therefore the x value becomes negative. That's the only difference. Now, you might be thinking, how do we figure out the rest of the points? That is what we will take a look at in our next video. Um, but here we go. We're going to bring back the unit circle touch app. And as you play with this, you'll start to see the symmetry between 60 and 120. The only difference is that the x value becomes negative. You use the same exact triangle. You're just flipping it over the y-axis. And again, with this app, you can change it to uh, your point to be in terms of radians, uh, meaning your your that's how many uh, of the that's how many radians or that's how many of the radius uh, fit into this point. That's your units, right? So even if you don't have R, we still know that this point is in terms of this radius. And sometimes we just make the radius 1 for simplicity's sake. So you can, though, you can see 
easily how it flips over the y-axis and the only thing that changes is the x value. So we'll use that concept and that information to figure out the rest of the points on the new circle in our next video.